Rapid population growth and expansion in the New England colonies inevitably led to clashes with tribes of this region. Once again, the three Ds, disease, division, and disposability, would make it difficult for native peoples to defend their homelands, sandwiched between the Hudson River and the Atlantic Ocean. This unit highlights two major resistance movements that the Native Americans of New England led against the Northern British American colonies. As memorialized in the holiday tradition of Thanksgiving, the Wampanoag Indians initially befriended the pilgrims, taught them survival skills, and became valuable trade partners during the Plymouth Plantation's founding. Truth be told, the tribes of Massachusetts Bay were in no shape to wage war against these new arrivals. English fishermen who visited this region prior to 1620 had unintentionally transmitted smallpox to this fragile ecosystem, and the consequences were grave. 75% of the Indian population died shortly before the pilgrims arrived, making diplomacy between the two groups necessary. The sachem, a French term for native chief or leader, of the Wampanoags credited with this early friendship and treaty with the pilgrims was Massasoit, the father of Medicom, the sachem who would become known as King Philip and who waged bloody war against the Massachusetts Bay Colony 55 years later. Relations with the Wampanoag and the Narragansett and the Pequot were good so long as the English colonials got what they wanted. But as settlement spread into the fertile Connecticut River Valley and competition over the fur trade for this region heightened, the first unified effort by tribes to expel settlers in Hartford developed. For two years, the English and the Pequot raided one another's settlements. The defining moment of the Pequot War came in 1638 in what has become known as the Mystic River Massacre. In the spring of that year, English forces surrounded the Pequot village of roughly 500 people, set it afire, and executed anyone that tried to escape. This massacre led the remaining Pequot forces to attempt to flee west, but the leaders were killed and their heads and hands were sent back to Hartford. The remaining 200 Pequot, uh, though themselves at the mercy of colonial leaders, were allowed to live either as slaves that were sent to Barbados or as members of an allied tribe. They were forbidden from ever identifying themselves as Pequot again. It effectively achieved cultural genocide. This event most typifies the English attitude that troublesome Indians were disposable. The Puritan treatment of the people at Mystic became prop propaganda for their critics back in England. As a response, New Englanders made feeble attempts to Christianize and assimilate Indians in praying towns. Forty years of uneasy peace followed the Pequot War. As more of their ancestral lands were settled by Europeans, the remaining tribes recognized their only hope for survival lay in intertribal unity. In a small irony of history, Medicom, nicknamed Philip, the son of Wampanoag chief Massasoit, who had welcomed the pilgrims in 1621, would become a charismatic leader that attempted to unify his tribes with the Narragansett, Nipamux, and Pocomatux. Because of his leadership and drive to influence other tribes, Medicom was dubbed King by the Puritans. After failed attempts at di diplomacy and a declaration by the colonies outlawing trade with the Wampanoags, Medicom waged war against the New England colonies in a way that had, uh, has led historians to refer to King Philip's war as the single worst calamity to occur in the colonies during the 17th century. The tribes united behind the Indian chief waged war against the colonies for over a year in a rest, uh, relentless European-like assault. In a coordinated front, more than half of New England towns were attacked by natives. 12 were completely destroyed. This war decimated the economy of Plymouth and Rhode Island. 
New England lost one-tenth of all men available for military service. The unity between the tribes dissolved when a praying Indian, a term for a Puritan Indian ally that likely lived in a praying town, infiltrated Medicom's camp and shot him in the back. The Sachem's wife and children were also captured and sold into slavery in the West Indies. King Philip's body was recovered by Puritan soldiers who brought it back to Plymouth, where his decapitated head sat on a pike outside the city gates for years. Bits of his body were taken as memorabilia and hung in trees, and his assassin was given one of the leader's hands as a trophy. In less than 14 months, 1,000 Puritans and 3,000 Indians died in this war. And while the casualty list is significant, two other outcomes of Medicom's rebellion are even more so. First, the breakdown of the Indian Alliance would be the last time the New England tribes would present a united threat to the English colonies. Survivors were pushed west of the Hudson River into upstate New York and north of the St. Lawrence River into French Canada. The second historical impact of King Philip's War was its effect on colonial unity. King Philip's War began uh, the development of an independent American identity. The New England colonists faced their enemy without the support from any outside government or military. And this experience initiated an identity for the people of these colonies that was separate and distinct from Britain. We will discuss this more in the next section. Attack on a Pequot Fort during the Pequot War of 1637, engraving by J.W. Barber, 1830. This was the first war between natives and Europeans in British North America. It culminated in the Puritan militia's vicious burning of and slaughtering of nearly 300 Pequot men, women, and children. The defeat of the Pequots eliminated armed resistance to the settlement of New Haven and Guildford. The Connecticut Valley would not see significant Indian troubles again for 40 years when the Indians of New England united in their final stand against the encroachments of English settlers in King Philip's War.